the most generous intellectual Professor Johan I hope you don't mind if I sit. I was foolish enough to fall in a uh, uh, shower in America three years ago and I hurt my back. So I can't stand too long. At any rate, the lecture I chose to give was on, on my design work. Uh, I have already given two lectures and I will give one in Ankara tomorrow, uh, mostly on my uh, writing writings. I have so, so far published 60 books, uh, mostly in English, and I have now 10 books in uh, six countries on the way, which will come out during next year. But, uh, and I had a, an office of uh, maximum 54 assistants until 2011, and I, I closed my office, and after that I have only been writing. So when I'm, I will show my design work, it, it's uh, a bit distant to me myself, as if I were speaking of somebody else than myself, because my <coughs> personality and interests have changed during the past uh, ten, 10 years. I have entitled my, entitled my talk 12 Themes in my Design Work Interplay of Thought and, and Form. Uh, I would like to say here, uh, already in the very beginning, that I have I grew up uh, on a farm, small farm during the war years in Finland, and I never heard anyone in farm life ask, asking the other, another person, can you do this? It was assumed that everyone can do everything which is necessary in life. And I have had that <coughs> attitude in my uh, architectural career. I have done everything always that I have been asked to do. And this multiplicity is something I wish to so show you. Um, I start with two quotations. Uh, the uh, French philosopher Maurice Merleau-Ponty, how would the painter or poet express anything other than his encounter with the world? And I would say, how can an architect, uh, how could an architect do otherwise? For me, architecture, making architecture is uh, defining and exp uh, experiencing my personal uh, encounter with the world. Uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, uh, the originally Viennese philosopher who also practiced architecture somewhat, uh, has this uh, sentence in his notes. Working in philosophy like work in architecture in many respects is really more on work, uh, more working on oneself, on one's own interpretation, on one's way of seeing things. For me, this uh, idea of uh, uh, the philosopher that, uh, that uh, artistic work is very much working on, on oneself, uh, has become very important, and, and I think that's also uh, the essential point in uh, design and art, uh, artistic and art education, is to uh, emphasize the self of each individual student rather than the discipline as something outside all of us. Well, uh, I was in the opening concert of this uh, concert hall in Lapland, which is my last architectural project. And I was sitting on one of the front rows when the music began. I had not had time to follow the orchestra rehearsals, so the first musical sound was in the opening concert. And I imagined how it would sound, and as the note hit my ear, it was exactly as I imagined, and I was so happy I almost jumped up and said to myself, this profession cannot give you a better, more satisfying moment. You better stop here. <laughs> and I, the next morning I flew back to Helsinki and told my assistants, let's pack up everything. This is it. And I stopped right there. After that I have only designed, as I uh, told uh, the other day in uh, Izmir, uh, a perfume. I'm not going further to that, but 
just as a as a, a example of uh, uh, an architect's interest, uh, I was asked to design a perfume for a New York international perfume company uh, together with six perfume chemists. And I said, of course, I, I'm, I'm interested. And I'm, I'm not going into the details. I'm just saying uh, that's what I have done, done last. Here are uh, some covers of, uh, of my books, which, um, as I said, are now around 60. I can remember. I don't keep any account. These are two S uh, collections of uh, essays of mine. The third one is coming coming soon, and uh, there is also a dictionary of my writings being produced now in, in London. It will come out uh, next year. Dictionary sounds, um, sounds ambitious, but I have written uh, more than 400 essays, so uh, <laughs> there, there's, uh, there is uh, some material for every word that you can imagine. <laughs> well, these are my 12 themes. Uh, I uh, have realized that in my in my work, I go through uh, twelve uh, ideas usually: continuous line, penetration, circle, joint, touch, matter, scale, light, landscape, s stairway, column, and type. And I I go uh, through each one of these. The image is a uh, uh, private piece of my own height. I was uh, a representative of Finland at the Venice Biennale in 91, and this was uh, a piece outside the Finnish pavilion. Continuous line. I have always admired uh, master artists' capacity to, to uh, catch uh, a complex image in, in a continuous light, like in line, like in this case, Henri Matisse. And uh, in my work, both design and uh, architecture, I usually try uh, the idea of a continuous line, a kind of a profile in, uh, in my works at, uh, at some moment. Um, I have also designed quite a number of, uh, of uh, um, fonts for, which is uh, one of the most difficult design design tasks. <coughs> These are all prototypes. I have uh, about 50 uh, furniture prototypes. I have never shown them to any furniture factory. <laughs> Some uh, friends of mine have uh, uh, had uh, unique pieces uh, produced uh, by, by uh, carpenters. <laughs> now, one of the chairs I, I will show you is being made for a wealthy American lady. But I have never had commercial interest in, in my work. The uh, right hand side image is the shower stool for my wife. This is uh, the uh, reclining adjustable chair that is being made now for for an American lady. It, uh, the entire chair uh, uh, turns around on a single ac axis, and it's made of a combination of uh, carbon fiber and plywood, which is very resistant. It's almost like, uh, like leather, and uh, it's only four millimeters thick or thin, uh, and it mm, takes uh, the weight of the human body. Perforation. At some point in, in uh, every project, I realize that when I cut through a surface, a kind of a face appears, like a, a mask. And I have become interested in this mask uh, image. The first uh, project I did is my father's uh, grave marker on the left. Um, and I explained the idea behind it. My father was uh, a, uh, an atheist 
whereas some other family members were uh, had uh, Lutheran values. And I worked three years on this duality. How do I make a claim marker that addresses both uh, denial and acceptance? And uh, this was this is the marker of the absent cross. Some of you might uh, remember uh, Tadao Ando's uh, Church of the Light, which has a similar absent cross. This was done 30 years before my friend's uh, chapel in, in Japan. Well, throughout my, wife, uh, my life, I have been always doing something. And if I haven't ha didn't have uh, drawing design work to do, I, I ma made objects. And uh, I will show them. I became interested in uh, uh, the um, idea that a door would somehow evoke your curiosity. It would sort of invite you to closer. And I started to make doors with, uh, with holes in it. Uh, the right hand side image is uh, the Finnish Cultural Institute in Paris opposite the Sorbonne University. It's a uh, 12 millimeter on bronze uh, sheet with holes and glass lenses. In it. Uh, this I also make uh, sculptural exercises, which I, I do, do not intend them as sculptures. They are studies of something. This, in this case, uh, the two processes of cutting through metal and then uh, then uh, bending it. By the way, I was naive enough to think that I, I could cut uh, the figure in a stainless steel uh, plate and then bend it. Uh, it uh, mm -hmm. uh, distorts, of course. Uh, so I had to do it in the other way because I was so uh, de determined to have an object. This was ma uh, made um, in a huge uh, factory and it cost the uh, price of a Volkswagen, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, an example of my stubbornness. I uh, often try in, uh, in while working on a project just to see what a, a, an arc or a curve might, might do in that uh, context. This is an extension of a, a courthouse in Eastern Finland, the original courthouse is the rectangular building there by the famous Finnish architect Vilja Revel, who designed the famous Toronto City Hall. This is a project, uh, a, a, a house and studio for a designer couple, which uh, was never, never built. Then another uh, project with curves, which I will send uh, uh, show in more detail in the end. This is a astronomical in instrument uh, in America at the Cranbrook uh, Academy of Arts. To my knowledge, this is the most precise uh, instrument uh, to, to uh, read time uh, without mechanical parts. When? What was it? 91. But I'll tell, tell the story because it's kind of in interesting. Uh, this is measured. I'm a Pythagorean. And I always use uh, Pythagorean uh, uh, proportions, which means uh, the same as uh, musical musical uh, harmony. And in this case, I met, uh, ha had everything dimensioned according to my uh, uh, body size in Pythagorean uh, uh, proportions. And after that, it was found that this was a, a, a worked as an uh, astronomical instrument. But I will come back back to that. Just examples of uh, circles in uh, various scales. I used to work with craftspeople, like in this case with a with a uh, metal smith. Uh, 
it is rare to see such um, perfect, perfect metal work. And I always tell my students that uh, seek friendships with craftspeople in various fields because by just through your friendship you will develop an understanding of certain crafts and materials. These are, uh, this is a house and sauna for an art collector. I had uh, made this pro uh, project for myself uh, by a lake, lakeside uh, near Helsinki, but uh, I realized halfway <coughs> the pro pro uh, process that I could not get permission for it uh, because the buildings are too close to, to the shore. But then an art collector approached me and asked me to design a summer house and sauna for him. I said, wait uh, a second, wait a couple, couple of weeks because I have a big wooden model coming from Madrid where I have an exhibition of my work. Just uh, to start uh, talking around the model. He came to my office, looked at the model and was silent for five minutes and said, can't I build this one? I have exactly the same kind of site. And that's how, <coughs> how this building was, was built. Uh, the house proper bulges out of the uh, slope, whereas the sauna does the reverse curve and sort of hides in, in the intimacy of the terrain. How do they relate in the plan? I missed that part. Sorry? The, 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 the circle parts. How do they relate in the plan? Well, one. one uh, goes uh, towards the lake, the other one away from the lake. Okay, but yeah. they don't co compose a circle together? No, 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 they are of uh, different size. Good. Mm -hmm. This is the sauna. There is a sunken bath and the window very low on the mm -hmm. there is to see the lake uh, when quite the lake. This is uh, the sauna. And I just uh, would show you the window. I placed it so that while you are sitting on the platform of the sauna, uh, you are looking at this uh, hole on the, in the opposite shore. Because for really meditating uh, your, your mind, you need to be looking at infinity. And this does it. The other detail I want to show is a fireplace which uh, pushes out of the house and uh, at the back wall of the fireplace is glass so that you are looking at the fire and the landscape at the same near and, and far at the same time. <laughs> this is another use of a circle a huge shopping center in, in Helsinki, in the center of Helsinki. I had this central space uh, as a uh, series of circles, but then I happened luckily to uh, visit Rome and uh, Borromini's uh, oval spaces impressed me so much that I made it into an oval and it's so much, much better. But uh, it's, I think it's quite natural enough uh, in, in the field of architecture that a Borromini church can inspire a shopping mall. <laughs> Joint is, of course, essential in architecture nowadays. Of course, building has become so technical that uh, architects do not think so much of joints. I have thought a lot about, about uh, joints and made exercises like, like this. This is a uh, do-it-yourself uh, summer house system which I developed in 1968, and uh, on the right you see uh, see the uh, jointing system. Uh, this is one of the um, prototypes which was built by Alvarado, uh, next to Alvarado's famous Villa Mairea house. This was just 20 meters from Villa Mairea. It, this was designed as, as a uh, completely do-it-yourself system. We even had uh, order sheets 
uh, for the customers with prices of each element so that they could exactly calculate the price of the, the house. And uh, everything was that could be done without uh, tools and without, uh, uh, without uh, scaffolding. Here is the only joint which uh, was made of the uh, aluminum protrusion. This, of course, uh, anyone who knows Japanese architecture realizes that this is uh, a variation of uh, a traditional uh, Japanese wood joint. Then I will tell you what we, uh, how we made the uh, uh, concrete foundations. Uh, this was done in '68, and '68 was uh, there was a strong pacifistic movement uh, in, in the student world. We uh, came to think that uh, uh, army bazooka shots, the anti-tank shots, which melt uh, steel at 10,000 degree uh, Celsius. Uh, inches, they, they will become useless. So we uh, made the uh, foundations by shooting the army uh, bazooka shots vertically into the ground. And it's a beautiful method because the extreme heat uh, melts everything. And uh, in uh, five minutes you have a perfect ceramic uh, cube uh, in the ground. You just insert the steel enforcement and pour the concrete, that's it. And you don't leave any, any traces on, on the ground. If you start to dig them, you have piles of sand that you have destroyed, damaged the surface of earth uh, quite widely. Um, we built uh, 60 prototypes. Uh, the last one in front of the Pompidou Center in, in Paris. But uh, the, the company uh, closed down the entire housing plant because uh, they didn't consider housing uh, profitable enough for, for their business. So this has remained uh, a, a legendary project, uh, widely published and exhibited at Museum of Modern Art in New York and so forth. <coughs> Joints. The, uh, my our own dining table. It, this looks like a simple joint, but it's an extremely difficult joint to do for the carpenter because there has to be a semi-circular circular, uh, circular uh, cavity behind each one of the knobs. The second one is, is my father's urn, which uh, I wanted to appear as a, as a piece without any joint. And this is just to uh, um, say that whenever you begin to articulate uh, the jointing of vertical and horizontal, the column appears because uh, when you begin to uh, articulate that, uh, you know, encounter, uh, a miniature column uh, appears automatically. Touch has been important for me uh, as, as, an, uh, as a, an architectural quality. When I uh, made drawings, I never thought of uh, uh, lines as lines. I thought uh, of the lines as something that uh, I'm touching and uh, that, that sensitizes one for the rounding of the, of the edge. These are uh, door pulls. I made the originals in, in uh, clay and then they were cast. I, I have considered the door handle or the door pull of the house as the handshake of uh, the house. And I have made a special ha handshake for each one of my, <laughs> my houses. I collaborated with a sculptor friend uh, who cast my, my and my uh, door handles. Then 
when I had my exhibition of the Venice Biennale, and uh, in the next pavilion there was, uh, I knew there would be uh, Frank Gehry, and uh, next to him uh, Peter Eisenman. I decided that, and um, I knew they would have huge projects. I wanted to make miniature projects, and, and my exhibition was entitled Architecture in Miniature. For instance, I, I made 36 variations of uh, uh, a door handle with the idea that a door handle can gesture some kind of a uh, polite uh, courtesy to the, to the hand instead of just uh, sticking out on the, on the door. This is uh, about uh, one, one third or half, half of them. As I said, I have never offered any of my design works to be produced. Now, 12 of these are being produced in London. Yeah. Someone had, in London had found out and came to me and said, I know you have done door handles, and we have now began to produce uh, uh, Carlos Carpas door handles. Would you like to uh, permit us uh, to, to do your door handles with Carlos Carpas? I said, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here the, uh, I'm showing just the, the uh, handrail to uh, suggest uh, a, an interest in, in the body movement be, beyond the hand also, the, the <coughs> uh, movement of the body. I think for me architecture is uh, essentially choreography. It is a choreography of how we move in, in spaces and uh, well it's also the choreography of what we look and, uh, and how we, we feel. Uh, I have I'm, I have done my design works uh, in a way as, as a choreographer. These are two examples of the of the uh, significance of touch. The left hand side image is uh, the favorite building of mine, which is a tiny, tiny summer studio of the best Finnish painter, living painter. Uh, he's my best client ever. I have done 12 projects for him since 1959. The other image is uh, our own uh, kitchen in Helsinki. And uh, I show this just to point out the uh, interest in the edges and uh, the tactility of, of things. For me, my, my, most of contemporary architecture is too hard, too hard-edged uh, and aggressive. They don't invite uh, to, uh, touch, and uh, it's the touch is not necessarily a practical touch by hand. It's an imaginary uh, touch by by the eye. The uh, upper one is an image uh, of a stair in one of the sh shops in in Helsinki which I did the lower step when you go down a uh, stair you want to uh, stop for a split second and look to the other direct uh, all the other directions that uh, uh, widened step uh, is a choreography for that uh, moment when you look the other one is an exhibition of animal architecture which I designed in 1995 in the architecture museum in, in Finland and uh, since this uh, is in the city in the center of Helsinki I wanted somehow to distance uh, the mind of the uh, visitor away from the city and I decided to put uh, 10 centimeters of uh, sand on the floor and uh, because uh, the muscular memory is so ancient in, in, in our body that when people walk uh, on a the sand they forget that they are in the city they, they, that ex muscular experience <coughs> takes them back to the shore, original shoreline and it worked uh, quite well, this is by the way the only exhibition that I know of where there were 16 live architects working in their constructions during the exhibition, 16 animal species alive
another exhibition. Nice texture from the feet of the <laughs> exhibition visitors. I also published a book which uh, uh, will now be pub published by Gustavo Gili, the uh, architectural publisher in, in uh, Barcelona in, in Spanish. These are two uh, examples of sound, touching by sound. The uh, Finnish Institute in Paris, you enter through the uh, granite lobby and then you come to uh, uh, four stories high vertical tiny space with uh, a ramp at the stairs and uh, the construction of the stairs and ramp up specifically metal and wood to make this uh, sound so that which echoes uh, through that uh, space. The other uh, image is uh, the International Moscow Bank next to Kremlin in Moscow for which I won the uh, annual uh, architecture prize of the uh, Russian Federation. It has a six stories uh, high uh, uh, courtyard with skylight and then uh, these wooden bridges, metal bridges, crisscrossing for the same purpose that, that when you ever you enter it you hear other people crossing the space or you will pronounce that you are doing it yourself. Uh, I have, since my childhood, at, the, <coughs> at my grandfather's farm, I have been a very interested in multisensory experience. Uh, that will be my lecture tomorrow in, <laughs> in Ankara. Uh, I designed, was commissioned to design a pedestrian bridge uh, in one of the uh, ecological parks in, in Helsinki. And I remember this uh, traditional eel trap of Finnish farmers, mm -hmm. and I uh, made the pedestrian bridge uh, inspired by the eel trap. And I'm showing this uh, just to make the point that you can be inspired by something which is totally different than for what you are doing. I said the other day that when I have done, uh, work, begun to work on an architectural pro project, I have never gone to my library to look at uh, similar projects by other architects. Never. I always look at paintings. I, I get inspiration from paintings. This is a rather huge shopping mall where I, and shopping is something that uh, almost frightens me. So I wanted to do something um, calming for the uh, for the panicked shoppers and I made a colonnade of <laughs> nine, nine water columns which are eight meters tall and water runs from a, a, a basin <coughs> from the top of the column and this uh, water running down at this speed is just hypnotizing and it's almost like therapy in the middle of <laughs> shopping. Matter, color. Uh, this is a prototype for a uh, for a industrial uh, housing system uh, done in 1968. Uh, the first building in Finland uh, to use plastic uh, fa facade elements. In, uh, when I was young, I uh, younger. I didn't care for materials, I didn't understand the meaning of materials, but then I made a couple of summer houses, I already showed the artist's summer house, this is uh, an engineer's summer house nearby which was also made of stones picked right from the site. Mm -hmm. And uh, that made me interested in, in uh, the language <coughs> of materials, this is an exhibition on the wood in Finnish art and my idea in this exhibition was not to name the objects at all uh, in order to uh, make the visitor uh, develop an active uh, attitude about them. Is this old or new? Is this art object or a tool? And it worked uh, very well this uh, psychology of hiding information. 
rather than giving information. This is a couple of images uh, from uh, my uh, Sami Lab Museum up in the uh, Arctic, Arctic region. Uh, this is another image of the eel trap. This, this, is, uh, this is a replacement shop for, uh, for Marimek of the famous fashion company. This, uh, these images are a courtyard right in the center of Helsinki, which was an abandoned courtyard. And uh, it was turned into a courtyard for restaurants. And uh, the uh, buildings on all sides are seven or eight stories high, so there is very little light. I wanted to color it in a way that you get the illusion of being in the Mediterranean world, or perhaps <laughs> a Mexican village. And so you imagine light where there is not much, much light. And then I have always admired Luis, uh, Luis Paragon. It's architecture, the, the village fountain is my... Where exactly is that? In the very center of Helsinki, in the very center. In the very center, in the sense that... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it is uh, next to the famous insurance company by uh, Saarinen. Okay. Uh, Popular uh, insurance. Yes, yes. I met this, been there for years. So, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> One of the veterans, yes. These are two... Uh, this is an exhibition where I also wanted to uh, use color and the sense of material. I made uh, a uh, painting, mm. painted canvas for each one of the rooms, uh, 12 meters wide and 5 meters tall. By spraying the uh, canvas all the way uh, wet and then uh, having uh, textile color in, uh, you know, a basin and then taking cloth uh, uh, with the color and then squeezing it like that. These are paintings done, uh, created by uh, gravity. And I wanted to have this uh, vague, ambiguous space in contrast to the very precise space of, uh, of structural objects. Sorry. This is from the uh, concert hall. I developed on both sides these color schemes, which are acoustical chambers. But I was thinking of the awkward uh, few minutes before a concert when people uh, are, are seated. You don't know where to put your eyes and what to think. Uh, these, these colors provide a kind of a massage during those uh, <laughs> awkward moments, which also mean that when the music starts and the illumination on the colors disappears, you, you are perfectly awake at the very first moment. This is a project I did with a famous uh, British uh, lady, sculptor lady, uh, Rachel Whiteweed. There was an exhibition of snow uh, structures in, in the North, uh, Arctic area put up by an uh, American-Chinese uh, curator, and he paired architects and sculptors. And I was lucky enough to be paired with Rachel Whiteweed. And I went to London uh, to his, uh, her studio. She was working at that time on stairways, <coughs> and I was working on stairways. I will show a bit later. So we said, let's do a stairway of snow. And uh, what we did was to take exactly the, in one-to-one -one scale, the stairway in his East London studio and turned it sideways. And it was built of uh, uh, shining white uh, snow, as you see. The human mind is so limited that nobody really understood this is a stairway in an East London, an ordinary building, it looks so, so strange. <laughs> the outdoor, uh, had, uh, the 
exterior has no no meaning, mm -hmm. so it was just uh, sort of like cut the extra snow away. Here you see how it looked, and then I have turned the slide to see that uh, the stair is uh, even quite detailed. Scale has been an interest for me. This is my smallest <coughs> project ever. I won the competition for the last uh, uh, coin that was minted in Finnish currency before before we accepted, we became part of the European Union. It was dedicated to Jean Sibelius composition, Finlandia. And uh, the diameter is uh, 18 millimeters. <coughs> I made the, uh, the model and drawings in 10 to 1 scale. And usually we detail <laughs> 1 to 10 scale. <laughs> This is uh, my biggest project, which was not e executed. It, it is a uh, uh, coal-powered coal um, power station, which was never built because co coal then become, became a problematic uh, uh, material. Uh, the uh, boiler units are 120 meters tall, and the glass chimney is uh, uh, 240 meters tall. The chimney is glass because in modern power, uh, power plants uh, the gases and smokes are uh, inside steel tubes inside the, the, the uh, chimney. So the chimney could just as well be glass rather than concrete or brick. By suggesting a glass uh, tower and a uh, 230 meters tall uh, illuminated vertical, my intention was to turn the uh, imagery of the power station into something positive rather than something that uh, produces smoke and pollution. <coughs> While I was working on an uh, entire block, banking block in the center, I was working on a uh, shop in the same, same block and uh, designing uh, objects like like the uh, door pools here, which, which excites me very much to be uh, dealing with a huge scale and then a miniature scale. And I think uh, this is something that uh, architecture today very often misses, uh, almost always misses, is the understanding of how to relate the human size and human uh, 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 sensations to, to a big scale. In uh, uh, classical architecture, it's always done by moldings and things like that. You have this uh, gradual uh, scale from your size to the building, but modern buildings usually miss it. This is the um, my biggest ex executed project, uh, a huge shopping mall and underground uh, bus terminal in the middle of Helsinki and then our own fireplace uh, the things to handle, <laughs> handle uh, coal. I just put them to together to make the point that both are architectural projects. And uh, it, the difference is that this is much more difficult to get to small one because you have only one or two proportions to, uh, to deal with. <coughs> In the big one, you have so, a real novel to tell, but uh, mm -hmm. this is just a little haiku. <laughs> this is uh, the center banking block on which I uh, worked simultaneously uh, when the Finnish uh, the Helsinki uh, telephone company asked me to design the telephone booths, which have now uh, disappeared from the streets because of the mobile This is another very small uh, project in the Helsinki Harbor, an ice cream kiosk, which uh, uh, I, I, I was asked to do a um, uh, kiosk design that uh, can take vandalism. I said, you cannot fight, fight vandalism. You can fight vandalism by kindness. 
uh, do, ma making so fragile things that nobody wants to attack them. <laughs> and that's what I did. The, also, the, the wooden uh, keek uh, back uh, is made of uh, triangular uh, oh. pieces. It doesn't create a surface for the spray glass to, to no. spray. And this has been there around now 20 years and no, not a scratch. <laughs> 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 Always when I had uh, a spare minute in my office time, I, I designed something. These are Candle's uh, gifts for <coughs> friends. As a uh, art student of architecture, I made my living uh, as a graphic designer. I also uh, silk screen printed many of these my, myself. Frank Lloyd Wright and Le Corbusier. Light is uh, seminal, of course, in architecture. When I was young, I didn't understand the magic of light. Uh, for me, it was just a quantitative thing, but then it has become a qualitative thing. The most sublime things uh, in architecture have to be done with, with light. Now when I design a building or, or renovation, I try to bring uh, natural light to the darkest, to the last corner, because that uh, the, the light particularly in our uh, climate is, is so important. This is an underground extension of the Helsinki city planning office, which uh, has uh, natural light through the through a deck with uh, full-size trees growing on the deck. This is a, uh, a library of a courthouse in eastern Finland. The Sami Lab Museum uh, uh, about 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. The, uh, all the public spaces are white, uh, like snow drifts turned upside down to re uh, reflect all the light, whereas the ex exhibition spaces are painted in indigo blue to make the space disappear. The uh, right hand side image is uh, my earlier flat on a Elliot Saarinen designed an uh, apartment building in Helsinki. You now my son lives there. Uh, I <coughs> was working with the workmen myself on this every single day. Uh, the left hand side image is uh, for both are from the Finnish pavilion at Sevilla. Where the, the competition was won by four uh, first year students of mine. And uh, they were given the commission with the uh, uh, agreement that I will serve as their godfather. <laughs> and uh, then I ended up designing the exhibitions. The uh, left hand side image are two uh, huge walls next to each other with uh, co uh, constantly changing images. This, this is uh, before the this, this is at the time of early computer age. Uh, the uh, images on that side are projected through the holes on, on this side and vice versa. And this is almost like magic that you have two projections. Yes, uh, as you see. This. I was just about to fall asleep uh, in my bed when I got the idea of how about projecting two uh, images. <laughs> uh, but my understanding of physics was so poor that I didn't, couldn't figure out whether it worked. I put my clothes on and went to my office where I had two projectors and experimented. Yes, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Then when you begin uh, be becoming interested in natural light, you also become interested in 
artificial light. The building on the <coughs> left is uh, the Museum of Modern Art in the center of Helsinki by Stephen Hall. I, my office was the local architect. And I was commissioned by the city to design the, the uh, outdoor areas around the museum and illumination. I have made quite a number of, uh, of uh, uh, lights of all sides, uh, all, all kinds. Again, I have never offered these to any, any producer. Landscape is uh, an important uh, starting point for me. And uh, this is my sketch of the uh, site of the artist's summer house uh, before I designed the su summer house. These are just a few sketches from, from my trips around. I always uh, try to persuade my students to sketch rather than take photographs. I can remember every single uh, spot around the world where I have made a sketch, but I don't remember the places where I have taken photographs. It just shows uh, the, the difference between the two means of recording. These are, there are images of uh, how the buildings uh, relate with uh, nature. In, in uh, Finnish uh, thinking, we try to put our house in the nature so that uh, as if uh, the nature would be completely uh, untouched. In many other countries, most other countries, uh, man first creates an opening and then he builds a house in the middle of that, that opening. This is a Sami lab museum. There is one and a half meters of snow every winter around the building and on the building. This uh, little project is a tea house for one of the directors of Nokia. It was uh, built in a carpenter's uh, studio, uh, studio and then lifted <coughs> complete on top of a 30 meter tall uh, rock covered with moss. And uh, it was beautiful to see the uh, construction company do it. They had covered the rock with a green cloth uh, to protect the moss. And there was just a little hole like uh, the, uh, the rock would be a patient in a, a surgeon's uh, operation table, and they inserted the, the uh, structure in that hole, and all, all the moss was uh, untouched. This is a bigger project, a uh, canal in uh, a uh, you know, new housing area near, uh, near the center. This uh, image was taken when it was just new. Now, now the trees on both sides have uh, grown. My image of the uh, canal was that it's a flooded uh, boulevard. And uh, now that the trees are mature, the image is coming. Then uh, a landscape in a small scale, uh, a family grave uh, where I made a kind of a miniature house, a block for each one of the family members uh, and then when the, the, their names are added on top. This. Uh, uh, the image on the right is the Finnish uh, Cultural Institute in Paris. Uh, the other one is a poster for a textile artist friend of mine. And these two reveal my, my uh, almost obsession with horizontal lines on top of each other. You remember that, uh, that there was an image from the archipelago, the little rocky islands. Uh, I think that uh, when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm unconsciously doing a kind of a landscape painting, uh, repeating the very structure of Finnish landscapes. Stairway, 
I have exercise, made exercises in stairways of all kinds. Uh, the stairway is always uh, of uh, special interest for me because the body is so closely associated with the body. Uh, you, you measure the stairway uh, in many ways and you hold your hand on the handrail. So in the same way as the door handle brings you to intimate contact with the building, the stairway does it uh, also. The image on the uh, upper Im image is uh, the uh, Finnish Cultural Institute in Paris. Uh, when I was designing the stair, I was looking at, I, I act actually purchased this uh, Japanese uh, woodcut and what interested, interested me was this detail here, mm -hmm. the legs of the man making conscious of the absent work. So I think a good stair terrace informs you something about what is down there and what is up above there. It's just not uh, only a mechanical thing, it's also a narrative thing. Then, uh, about 20 years ago, I was invited by three very, very good painters, the best painters in my country, to join them in a uh, in an exhibition in the Helsinki Art Hall, and I made 26 uh, stairways cast in bronze for that exhibition, plus uh, these, are some, these are sort of Escherian studies about what it means to go up and uh, descend down. And then there were two full-scale uh, stairways in the stair hall, a male stair and female stair. Mm -hmm. The right-hand side uh, stairway is my gift to Glenn Murcott. <laughs> <laughs> column. I have been interested in column. This is the exterior of the uh, art hall in Rovaniemi in Lapland. And uh, I wanted to, since this is just at the edge of, uh, of civilization, uh, from here on it's, it's just uh, wilderness, I wanted to uh, have an echo of uh, Mediterranean culture there and uh, make these granite columns uh, as an echo of uh, distant cultures. At the same time they are also a protection uh, against the uh, traffic when lab people probably have seen modern art for the first time in their lives they might be a bit confused the colonnade protects them from uh, absent-mindedly or, or uh, in aggression running underneath uh, cars the left -hand side image is a colonnade in the courtyard which I showed earlier to just to uh, evoke tactile interest in the people who enter that place. This is uh, a shop interior where uh, there were columns like this, but wrongly placed after uh, later. So I sort of censored them by um, putting them inside a, a veil, but revealed the uh, original column in, in one quarter section. Then uh, the colonnade of the Cranbrook project, which brings me to the last uh, theme time. We have, there are a uh, huge variation of uh, time scales from uh, astronomical time to geological time to biological time, etc., etc., to atomic time. And uh, my Cranbrook um, uh, project uh, deal, deals with time and, and space and uh, the uh, structure, although it doesn't look like it, it is, it is an astronomical instrument. I was uh, asked by the woman lady president of the Cranbrook Art Academy to review some, of the, some architectural projects that they were working on. And when I went there and uh, 
late at night she took me uh, for dinner and then suddenly said there is this spot where a new road enters uh, where are we here a new uh, road from Detroit enters the campus and meets the street here and it, it's an art uh, play, uh, spot could you turn it into a place and I said yes my plane leaves tomorrow morning at 8 from uh, Detroit can we meet at 6 o'clock uh, in the morning I will show you a photo and she had told me that when you come to this intersection you turn to the right she saw by her hand to the right, to the museum, art museum, and to the left, to the Institute of Science. And I, I took uh, the motifs from Ariel Saarinen, the colonnade, and the long axes, and uh, I took the two hand gestures. One which uh, <laughs> gestures to the colonnade of the art museum, and the other curving bronze wall, which gestures to the Institute of Science. And then I made a circle to unify the pedestrians and the vehicles, and uh, uh, indicated north, south, east, uh, west orientations. And then this uh, oval uh, space became the sun tile. There is a long <coughs> row of airport uh, spotlights to create a, a uh, wall so that cars do not uh, run into the colony. Well, so far I had been only, only thinking of this as an abstract uh, sort of sculptural architectural proposition, but then things began to happen. I found in uh, my walks in the compound, I found strange singular pieces of uh, stone that uh, were not related with other stones. And I asked the ge geologist director of the Institute of Science, and he said, showed me a map of where the uh, 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 glacier uh, one mile thick had stopped <coughs> 18,000 years ago. It had, the edge had been exactly there. And these uh, strange stones are sandstone <coughs> brought by glazier from Canada 18,000 years ago. So selecting uh, six stones from the walls, I could uh, somehow duplicate the, the uh, what the uh, glacier had done, and I thank the glacier for having brought uh, these uh, samples. They are each different. This, then, this, these are post tensioned columns uh, made of parts that uh, grow in Fibonacci series. I have always been almost obsessed with Renaissance and uh, Renaissance uh, mathematics. This is more. Uh, my tribute to Renaissance mathematics. And uh, this, this is uh, the, the gnomon with a, a mirror that um, a lens that casts uh, the sunlight in a 30, cent, 30 millimeter circle on, on the ground. And uh, here you see that. And uh, the time can be read with uh, three minute precision. Uh, you probably know that uh, the shadow of a coin uh, changes all the time mm -hmm. because it's a result of three movements. Earth turning around its own axis, Earth turning around the sun, and also the axis of the Earth doing like this. And this three movements uh, combine in such a complex manner that it never repeats itself. In year uh, 63 
thousand before Christ, the shadow of uh, the moon shadow during a uh, year had this shape. The year 2000, which was the year when this was uh, done, it was a loop like this. In 96,405, it will be an asymmetrical. <laughs> These were done in Helsinki Astronomy Department. The uh, current uh, loop was made in uh, stainless steel. The, uh, the uh, analemma, they are called analemmas, analemma of the past in, uh, in uh, lead and the analemma of the future in uh, bronze, with the idea that in the year 1969, 69, someone, if there is still someone, could go and polish the knobs and see whether our clock is still on time. <laughs> the astronomers have assured that it will be on time. <laughs> I had one more problem then left. Uh, there is a uh, manhole in the middle of the area which just came through my geometric operations and I remember that's Vesaika Piscis, the background of uh, Christ in religious uh, representations in the Middle Ages, the holy area. The, there is a manhole. I first said we have to move, move the manhole. That will cost another $200,000, so we can't do it. Then I asked, uh, suggested that I remembered the manhole in here on the Sporsch's painting at, uh, at the Prado. W when you look at this uh, detail here, it, it's uh, strange things are happening around that uh, manhole. I suggested that we uh, uh, take engrave. Uh, this uh, detail on the manhole cover. But foolishly, the, uh, he, he, this would, was my proposal. The academy applied, sent a letter to Prado asking, can we use uh, Hieronymus Bosch painting on a manhole? The <laughs> <laughs> answer was no. no. <laughs> then I couldn't use it. <laughs> my next idea was to somehow concretize the, uh, the uh, aspects of gravity and so forth to the, to the people. I asked uh, my astronaut, astronaut and my friend to calculate exactly the length of the ver uh, plumb line, vertical, through that manhole cover. How, uh, what, at what distance from the uh, center of the Earth it would pass it, and exactly the spot where it would emerge on the other side of the Earth. And this is... Uh, the uh, message I got from my uh, astronomer friend. <coughs> the plumb line extending <coughs> down from this point will pass the center of the Earth at a distance of 31.3 kilometers. This, the line will emerge from the surface of the Indian Ocean about <laughs> halfway between Kerguelen Island and Perth, Australia, 12,737 kilometers below this point. And uh, I have been watching people uh, walking uh, over the manhole and then realizing there is some, some text. And when they read the text and real understand what it means, the immediate reaction is... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> some questions. If it is ready, then you can entertain questions with lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I would gladly answer any questions, provided I can.
providing what you can ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting that you have a distance from this period of your uh, life, with, as you explained before. And I wonder because I find it also very refreshing to uh, maintain some kind of a distance from the object that you are working so that other people can also touch it so it doesn't get too personal. So I was, I wondered. If you, if you had also some distance from this object that you are you were working on when you are working on it, uh, now you have a distance of time. Yes. There, mental distance. Yes, I think your your uh, question is a very pertinent uh, question. I think in the design uh, phase. Also, uh, in, in writing, uh, you have to identify yourself totally with the work, whether it's uh, text or, or or an object. But before it's finished, you have to work yourself out away from it uh, and and look at it uh, uh, as if somebody else did it. I don't believe at all in uh, art as a self-expression. I would. I would feel appalled if uh, other people had, had to live in my emotions. I want the work to be objective and survive by itself without uh, my presence or my, my explanation. So I think both are needed at uh, different, uh, different phases. Mm -hmm. But did you have that also when you were working, not as a writer, but as a designer? Oh, yes, yes. yes. Yes, yes. Well, in a way it's... Uh, because as a designer you are also working with other people who are yes. uh, working on the same object. Yes, but So you, you need to include them also personally. Y yes, but still you identify mm -hmm. yourself with the ideas so strong and <coughs> strongly and particularly if uh, you have a tactile uh, relationship with with your work, it becomes even more in intimate. Your work is all uh, there's almost an erotic, uh, unconscious relationship. Uh, so it has to be extremely uh, intimate, but then it has towards the end you have to uh, depart. Okay. At least in in my mentality, that has to happen. If something of myself is left in the project, I, I feel uh, I, I feel bad. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, I have just one question. You have this uh, grave memorial, which of uh, the different units for a family, and it really reminded me of this uh, Stelenfeld in Berlin. You know, the the Holocaust uh, memorial. Is it, is it related in any way? To, to which? Related to? There is in, in Berlin is this uh, Holocaust Memorial, ah, Stelenfeld. It's quite oh, famous. The, the and it's, it's similar. It's just blocks in different no, heights and no, dimensions. Mine was done 20 years before that. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is a, maybe it was the inspiration. No, I, 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 I couldn't have had any <laughs> Yes, I, I know what you mean, but uh, the same same as I mentioned uh, with Tara on the church, uh, I, I just want to make clear that I, I, I was not inspired by Tara on. I, I believe I was uh, in inspired uh, again more by Siena painters than, than architects. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your view on landmarks, say? Pyramids, or the mausoleum used to be here, or the Eiffel Tower. But they are important. They are important because they they are part of human con consciousness, uh, and uh, they are very important. Uh, uh, 
that is one of the tasks uh, of architecture is to concretize uh, past, present and future uh, uh, in a very concrete manner. There is a narrative, abstract narrative uh, power in architecture which is fu fundamental. Modern thinking has a bit uh, underestimated that uh, power and need. Was. Uh, uh, Suha already gave the time mark <laughs> from the <drawing. laughs> Maybe we can continue while we eat the lunch. If you can give a comment about future architecture education, <coughs> especially based on your criticism or your comments on what we have done now. Well, I, uh, I am of the opinion that <coughs> architectural education should shift uh, the focus from the object to the to the person to the. Uh, sense of self of each student. I don't think there is any real meaningful uh, creative education in creative fields without activating the, the uh, curiosity and responsibility and ethical sense and all of that of each, each individual. So I think the sh shift should be from the object to the, to the, to the Maker and also the one who experiences it. That's why I uh, nowadays write and lecture very often on experience, architecture as an experience, <coughs> not an object. Suha wants us to. Yes, bon appetit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.